Following the financial crisis of 2008, Satoshi Nakamoto proposed and developed a software that was to become new digital money, Bitcoin. With Bitcoin, Satoshi Nakamoto introduced to the world a central bank of the internet, a cryptographic currency, one not possible before due to the double spending problem. This double spending problem was solved by creating a new type of database known as a blockchain. Five years later, Vitalik proposed extending the Bitcoin blockchain for use in more than just money. The vision of Ethereum was to create a platform that would become the next generation of the internet, a web 3.0. This generation would allow users to both explore the traditional web and the decentralized web. On top of Ethereum, a new generation of applications would be created, decentralized applications, which using Ethereum as the backend instead of placing security on servers. While Bitcoin was a protocol for storing and transferring value, acting as a central bank of the internet, Ethereum was a protocol for creating decentralized applications, adding logic to financial transactions, making digital currencies programmable. This programmable layer to digital currency is the smart contract. The smart contract allows the creation of binding agreements enforced by code. This enforcement of smart contract may be the transfer of value from one party to another, becoming ideal for use in digital currencies. Today, Ethereum is the world's leading smart contract platform, becoming the world's leading programmable network ledger. Because of Ethereum, developers don't need to build a blockchain from scratch to use blockchain technology. As an introduction on how to build on Ethereum, we'll deal with the most fundamental parts of creating a decentralized app, communicating to a smart contract from a website slash user interface. Que você fez, coração, mas sem cuidado. Fez chorar de dor. For this project, our stack includes React and Ethereum. I prefer keeping the files in separate directories to keep the project organized. For this project, we'll be using Truffle.js development suite. Uh, we'll install it if not installed already. I created a directory called blockchain to hold all files containing smart contracts. To initialize, we use Truffle. In contracts, there should now be a migration.sol. Migrating is the process of publishing smart contracts to a given blockchain. For simply understanding the process of how to migrate to deploy to a given UI locally, we'll use a simple storage smart contract given in the Solidity docs. This contract will have the ability to store a value and retrieve a value. We have our smart contract for the projects, Nexus to compile the code. We do so using Truffle. Compiling creates a new directory build slash contracts. This contains migrations.json and simple storage.json. Each of these JSON files should contain a contract name and ABI, which are used for deployment. One initial migrations.js is using migrations.json to deploy the migrations contract. We'll create another migration file to deploy the simple storage contract. That's all the setup needed to deploy our code locally. Setups for more complicated contracts may differ. However, this step of creating a migrations file is required. Next, we start a local Ethereum test network and deploy our contract locally. We do so using Truffle. Truffle should display a host and ports as well as accounts and their corresponding private keys. The given accounts are funded for our test network and the host will be used for 
configuring our wallet to interact with our local test network. Using this development environment, we migrate our contracts to this local test network. For the front end, we'll use a simple React Bootstrap using Create React App. We'll create a directory called Client. So we should have blockchain and client in the root. To interact with Ethereum smart contracts, we'll use a library called Web3. We'll add this as a dependency. For a user interface to interact with the smart contract, it needs a template of inputs and outputs. This template is provided by the ABI. We can find the ABI within build slash contracts once we've compiled the smart contracts. We'll copy over that ABI into another JS file so we can import it in our React app. We can now start writing code to connect React to Ethereum. To keep the interface simple, we'll use app.js. Within app.js, we'll import Web3 and create a Web3 instance, as well as importing our ABI. Next, we'll create a smart contract object instance. This instance takes in a smart contract address and an ABI. The address is provided by Truffle once we migrate. We'll create React hooks to access the getters and headers within our smart contract. The getter hook saves as a string in hexadecimal format. This will be converted into a number within the user interface. For the UI, we'll create a form to send, receive, and display the information we're manipulating from the smart contracts. The form calls functions handle set and handle get. We'll create those functions now. In Ethereum smart contracts, there are two types of functions. Functions that read the state of the blockchain and functions that manipulate the state of the blockchain or update it. Reading the blockchain is free. Committing new information to the blockchain costs uh, a fee. That fee is in the form of ether and is labeled gas. For functions that don't require gas, the access modifiers are view and pure. All other functions will require a fee. Within our user interface, we can call .send or .get. .send is used for actions that require a fee. .get is to see the result and can be used for actions that are fee-less or have a fee. To ensure there's no errors, make sure to reference the smart contracts. For our simple storage, the setter requires a fee, but the getter is free. For handle get, we call the get method of the smart contract, save the result, and set the result to the state using the get hook. For handle set, we estimate the gas fee and call the set method of the smart contract passing in the gas fee that we've estimated.
as the project is now, the entire application fits in app.js. But for more complicated applications, consider using a state management library. Now we can test the user interface locally. We'll configure a browser wallet to sign our transactions as an Ethereum wallet. The wallet we'll use is MetaMask. To configure MetaMask, we need the host and port. This host and port is provided by Shuffle when we start the testing environment. We'll add a new network by adding new RPC and pass localhost and the port were provided by Truffle. Next, we add an account. This account is provided by Truffle when we create our development environment. It should have 100 test ether within our local testnet. Once we configure our MetaMask account to use the local testnet we've created with Truffle, we should be able to test our user interface. If everything works correctly, we should retrieve the numbers stored in our smart contracts and we should be able to update that number. With these basics, having smart contracts and user interface interact with one another should be well equipped to build next generation applications for Web 3.0.